This is the first PCB I ever designed. A year and a half ago, I didn't even know how to use transistors. So let's talk about what you need to learn to get started with electronics design. All the channels, videos, and playlists I mentioned will be linked below in the description for easy reference later on. First, we'll go over the uses of some basic electronic components. Then we'll discuss prototyping on a breadboard to test a circuit. Next, we'll hand solder our circuit on perfboard to make it permanent. After that, we'll talk about KiCad, a software used for designing PCBs. And finally, we'll go over the PCB ordering process so you can get your own boards made quickly and inexpensively. By the end of your journey, you'll have learned the basics of electronics design and be on your way to creating all kinds of custom projects. Number one, learning basic electronics. Designing electronics involves understanding a few key concepts. These include voltage, series versus parallel circuits, the difference between AC and DC, and more. You'll also need to know how basic components work. Resistors, capacitors, diodes, LEDs, transistors, all these things are components that you combine in various ways to build a circuit. They are the building blocks of electronics. As an ultra brief overview, resistors are used to limit the flow of electric current, capacitors are used to store electric charge, kind of like a battery, diodes allow current to flow in only one direction, light emitting diodes or LEDs are diodes that also emit light, and transistors act like an electrically operated switch. You give them an electrical signal and they turn on to allow current flow or turn off to prevent current flow. We combine all of these with buttons, switches, and more to create anything you can imagine. To troubleshoot circuits, we use a multimeter to check voltages and currents, individual component values, Values, electrical continuity, and more. Numerous guides have been written about the fundamental principles of electronics and the components involved. I recommend Basic Electronics by Randy on Instructables. Read it through to get a crash course in what you'll want to know before diving into circuits. When you're comfortable with the basics, the Learning Circuit playlist from Element 14, the Engineering Mindset channel, the Learn Electronics channel, and the Great Scott channel will help you further expand your knowledge. If you're looking to use Arduino boards in your projects, check out the Arduino Workshop playlist from Core Electronics, the How To Mechatronics channel, and the DroneBot Workshop channel. Number two, prototyping on a breadboard. Solderless breadboards come in various sizes and allow you to easily connect components together to build and test circuits. While there are slight variations, they are typically electrically connected in the following format. Power rails all together and inner channels connected with a gap in the middle for integrated circuits or ICs. You add components by pushing their leads into the breadboard holes. When you place the lead of another component in the same channel, you have electrically connected the two in the same way as if you had touched or twisted the leads together directly. After you've drawn a circuit design called a schematic, you can easily test your circuit on a breadboard to check that it does what you intended. You'll start by creating simple circuits like an LED on-off button, and as you get more and more comfortable, you'll learn tons of different ways to use these same components in all manner of configurations. Science Buddy's How to Use a Breadboard video is a complete guide to breadboards, the types available, how they work, and methods for common troubleshooting. You can find some entry-level project examples at the end of the basic electronics guide. Number three, hand soldering on perfboard. Eventually, you'll want to make one of your projects more permanent instead of leaving it on a bulky breadboard where it could fall apart. We do that by placing the components and wires onto perfboard, creating a hand-wired circuit that is useful as a prototype, or even in certain permanent projects if you're only making a one-off. Perf boards are blank boards with individually plated holes. They can be plated on one side or both. I prefer using two-sided plating to maximize my circuit design options. No hole is connected to another until you bridge them using solder, a wire, or a component lead. They can be cut by scoring them with a utility knife, then snapping them on the score line, or by using a rotary tool with a cutoff wheel. If you use a rotary tool, make sure you wear a respirator and clean up afterwards, as the dust created while cutting can be harmful to your lungs. After adding your components, bend the leads so they stay in place. You'll use a metal alloy called solder to make the connections. The board and component lead are heated using a soldering iron, then solder is applied to mechanically and electrically connect the component to the board. Use proper ventilation to avoid breathing in the fumes. Soldering takes a steady hand and some practice, so be patient with yourself while you learn. Adafruit Industries has a great overview of the process, and Wormy's soldering crash course goes into more detail with plenty of tips and tricks for beginners. As for equipment, I use a Hakko FX 888D soldering iron. It heats up quickly, has an incredibly flexible cable, and many aftermarket tips exist due to its popularity, including sets used for melting threaded inserts into 3D printed parts. Check the description for links to all the equipment I use for soldering. Number four, learning KiCad. Eventually you'll want to make something on a smaller board or turn your circuit into a real product. Hand-wired boards aren't ideal for this due to their larger size and the time it takes to make them. Instead, you'll want to create a printed circuit board or PCB like this one. These are the ones you find in your laptop, cell phone, and basically all commercial electronics. They have really small components that mount directly to the surface of the board, rather than through holes in it, giving them the name surface mount device or SMD components. After designing and testing your circuit, you'll need to learn an electronic design automation program or EDA. 
In other words, PCB design software. I use KiCad because it's free and has plenty of power for hobbyists. You'll use KiCad to recreate the circuit you made on breadboard or perfboard, this time in a digital format that a PCB manufacturer's machines can understand. You can customize everything. The shape of the board, the placement of the components, the silk screened labels, and even the size of the individual solder pads. I highly recommend you learn KiCad by following the Getting to Blinky 5.0 course from Contextual Electronics, as it breaks down everything from start to finish. You can find the course on YouTube, however I suggest using their website instead since it includes all the videos, as well as links to relevant images, reference pages, and downloads. Number 5. Ordering Circuit Boards from this video sponsor, JLC PCB. They make high quality boards, at low costs, with quick turnaround times. I would know because I ordered these boards from them to test out the process. Start by going to jlcpcb.com hwn. Make sure to use the HWN extension as it gives you some free coupons and helps out the channel at the same time. Upload the zip file you created at the end of getting to Blinky and you'll see your circuit board pop up soon after. Scroll down to customize your board color, quantity, and all kinds of other settings. You can even have JLC PCB assemble your boards for you to save you soldering time later on. Search their parts database to find the ones you want and use the part numbers to create a bill of materials file. After that, generate the part orientation file using KiCad and upload both files to the order page. Check the links in the description for the official write-ups on how to create these files. Once they're added, you'll see an image of your circuit board containing the parts. If some of them are misaligned, don't worry. JLC PCB engineers will check over the design prior to production and contact you if they find any issues. Choose your shipping method, then submit your order to the queue. Apply any relevant coupons, submit your payment, then sit back and wait for your boards to arrive. If you'd like, you can track them every step of the way by going to your order history. And that's the process. You're left with a professional circuit board you can use for your own builds or in products you intend to sell. To give you an idea of what's possible, I've used the skills I described to automate the movement of my desk, add reactive lights and sound to cornhole boards, and make a wirelessly controlled quad barrel air cannon, among other things. Remember, all the resources I've mentioned are linked in the description for convenient reference later on. I hope this guide has been useful for you. If it has and you'd like to help me make more of these videos, there are several things you can do. The most direct way is by supporting the channel on Patreon. You can also like, comment on, and share any of my videos, as well as subscribe to the channel. Finally, you can place an order with JLC PCB using the link in the description as it shows them that their sponsorship is working. If you choose to support me in any of these ways, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I love making these videos, I'm just getting started, and I have so much to share with you. Please consider subscribing for more projects, and most importantly, thank you for watching.